Copy. How many years behind him, Brian? Four? Four. Got it. We're ready. Uh, give me an accurate speed real quick. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Ten away. Here we go. Hey there, Rob. We are in the uh, tail end of rush hour here as the driver of a stolen Nissan Murano is on the run from San Bernardino Sheriff's Department. Those are about a four units right behind him there as he travels northbound on the 605. So this started in San Bernardino, made their way down the 10 freeway, that suspect weaving across all lanes of traffic, possibly armed. Although that is unconfirmed and we do not know how many people are inside that vehicle. You just see that he is still refusing to pull over as he plays a game of cat and mice. Cat and mouse, I should say, with these officers. CHP is monitoring this. They do have a helicopter that was overhead here. But right now it is the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department who is the primary agency. Chased him westbound on the 10 freeway. He eventually got onto the 605 southbound. Went all the way down and then back up as he now travels northbound in the opposite direction back where he came from, back towards the 10 freeway. But this time, as I mentioned, he is starting to encounter more brake lights. But he has never stayed off of the freeway as long as we've been following this pursuit. He got off momentarily only to get right back onto the 10. Same thing on the 605. So again, trying to toy with these officers, but refusing to pull over occasionally using his signal there. But for the most part, not really obeying the rules of the road. Pretty uh, erratic dri driving, I would say, as he weaves across uh, all lanes of traffic here. You're seeing a little more volume as we make our way uh, further north here, and those units behind him are a full football field behind him, pulling back a little bit here and there, but still maintaining a visual of that suspect, Rob. Yeah, and that traffic plays into their decision-making quite a bit, especially considering that they are outside of their jurisdiction. It does affect things somewhat. If this was CHP, they may handle it a little bit differently, but obviously San Bernardino has their own protocols, and right now they are just maintaining a visual, not applying too much pressure, but they're also in a position where they don't want this to go sideways in any way in the midst of all of this traffic. You see a lot of other motorists who barely know what's going on behind them. They may see the flashing lights coming up behind them or hear the sirens, but now he's coming up on another... Uh, uh, decision point here this time we are coming up on the uh, the 60 freeway so it looks like he's gonna he's gonna take the 60 westbound he was coming west on the 10 freeway and is now going westbound on the 60 freeway back towards East LA if he maintains uh, this trajectory here now on the transition ramp here as San Bernardino is able to easily keep up with him they haven't had a whole lot of trouble keeping up with him and he hasn't been doing extreme speeds that it's been dangerous to keep up with him he's doing about the speed limit for the most part at least as long as we've been following it Yeah, as he travels westbound, he's going to be entering Montebello's jurisdiction here in a little while. And we'll start to kind of uh, listen out on the police radio to see if there's any contemplation of handing this off to the California Highway Patrol or if San Bernardino just wants this uh, for themselves. There's always a, 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 a tricky balancing act, whether to hand it off or whether to, you know, keep, uh, you know, 
keep it. And right now, San Bernardino is choosing to keep it uh, instead of handing this off. Now, there could be different uh, reasons for that. We don't know what those reasons are. But right now, as far as we know, this is merely a Grand Theft Auto suspect who is possibly armed. It raises the question, though, uh, what is he armed with and why? How do they know uh, that he's armed? Has he already flashed that weapon at officers? Has he committed another crime with that weapon? Is he also a shooting suspect? Or are there other charges that have been stacked up that lead them to uh, want this guy so bad. They are well outside of San Bernardino's jurisdiction here, but nonetheless, they are keeping this pursuit for themselves. Uh, if they start to run low on gas, if they start to have other issues, then maybe they will invite the California Highway Patrol. If he gets off of the freeway, they could invite other jurisdictions like the Sheriff's Department, or if he enters Montebello or LAPD's jurisdiction, then you might see a call for help. But right now, it is San Bernardino County Sheriff that is keeping a close eye on this pursuit, albeit from a short distance. Yeah, it does seem like a protocol is usually to hand off to CHP at some point, right? But uh, I guess the good news is it looks like traffic is somewhat clearing out in that area. It wasn't, uh, it's not as crowded right now as the uh, previous That's right. Freeway. Yeah, now he's going, he's going westbound, so he's going opposite rush hour traffic, even though we're in the 7 o'clock hour here. It's still bumper to bumper going eastbound, as you well know, Rob. But westbound traffic is definitely easing up, and as westbound traffic eases up, you can see him pushing close to 90 miles per hour, really stepping on the gas now as he has a little more pavement to play with, a little more freedom and a little more road to run with uh, away from these officers. Again, the open question is what else is happening inside that vehicle and also how much fuel is left in the tank. Those are questions that we don't know, but with four units behind him, they shouldn't have a problem keeping up with them. Yeah, and again, he doesn't seem to be uh, really blistering fast right now, but he is passing cars on the freeway pretty uh, pretty quickly. Um, Chris, do we know, I know you said it's a stolen vehicle. Was that what spurred the chase, or was uh, did something else set this off? Well, that's what we, that's all we are aware of, but like I said, the knowledge of a possible weapon, at one point there was a report that the weapon may or may not be a real weapon, it could be a replica, it could be a ghost gun, but with that kind of intelligence, it leads you to believe that they know more about this suspect than we do. Uh, it's not merely a, uh, a refusal to pull over here, or uh, sometimes with a stolen vehicle, you might uh, find it with a low jack device or some other uh, tracking software software from the manufacturer. In this case, it certainly appears that they have more intel on the suspect, which leads me to believe that this may be associated with other possibly more serious crimes, especially, as I mentioned, considering the fact that they are so far out of their jurisdiction. So lots of unanswered questions here, but suffice to say, they are working with more intel than we are privy to, but they are still uh, keeping a close eye on it, and they will see this to the bitter end, and hopefully uh, it'll end peacefully. Obviously, Obviously, that's always the resolution we're hoping for. We don't want to see anybody get hurt, and certainly that's a concern here when you see so many other vehicles on the road here. As I mentioned, traffic is definitely freeing up now as we get further west, but eastbound traffic is bumper to bumper, and he has shown a willingness once he kind of... Uh, chooses to either throw a curveball at those officers or changes his mind on direction, he'll jump off the freeway. He won't navigate those surface streets. It's usually only to find either another freeway or to go back where he came from. In this case, he's going westbound, so he could go back to an area he's more comfortable with if he chooses to go back to San Bernardino, or he could take this all the way out west. We just don't know what is going through his mind, where he originates from, where he resides, or what his destination is. Uh, but from the uh, maneuvers that he's made so far, something tells me he's kind of making it up as he goes along. We'll see uh, what he decides to do here, but right now he is firmly committed to the westbound 60 freeway heading towards East LA. Yeah. And it's a, a Nissan Murano, you said. That's a small SUV. You know, people have to remember, these are not high-performance vehicles. This is a, an SUV that has a relatively high center of gravity. So um, you'd hate to see him start driving erratically because uh, an SUV like that would be harder to keep control of, you would think, than uh, some, like a sedan or a sports car. Oh. Yeah, a little top heavy, not the best gas mileage, not the worst gas mileage, but certainly uh, capable of going very far distances. Now it looks like he's getting off the freeway. As we were mentioning just a moment ago, he has now gotten off of the 60 freeway. That will put him on surface streets, and he will either look for another entrance ramp to get back on the freeway, especially if he makes a left here on Atlantic Boulevard, or if he makes a right, that'll put him into the neighborhoods here. Uh, and uh, as we uh, navigate the San Gabriel Valley, we will see in 
just a minute how familiar he is with this part of town. His true colors will start showing here. If he slows down, if he starts looking for a nook or a cranny, always the possibility that he decides to just dump the vehicle and run for it. We'll look for that foot bail if he doesn't really know where he's going. But look at that, a pedestrian crossing the street here as he tries to navigate traffic at a red light. We'll start to get a better idea of just how desperate that individual behind the wheel is. Is he going to start running red lights and speeding through stop signs, or is he going to try and blend in here and look for a spot to dump the vehicle? Right now, you can see those uh, those San Bernardino County Sheriff's vehicles keeping a really close distance now. Originally, they were keeping their distance. Now they're pulling up very close behind him, only about five car lengths behind that suspect vehicle as he starts to go with the flow of traffic here at a relatively slow pace here up uh, Regan Street at Gerhardt Avenue. Now continuing through these intersections and we'll, we'll see, we will see uh, what the behavior is like behind the wheel. Also notice that night sun lighting up that suspect for those pursuing officers. That is compliments of the California Highway Patrol who is assisting with this pursuit from the air. But that's about it. They will not get involved unless they are specifically requested or feel the need to take over the pursuit for whatever reason. Uh, right now they are letting San Bernardino County Sheriff continue this pursuit. We'll see how much longer that lasts, especially now that we are off the freeway where we start to get into different municipalities. Yeah, and of course he's off the freeway, which exposes uh, pedestrians and uh, a lot more cars, possibly to to uh, a bad condition here, a bad situation. Um, uh, I'm being told this is in uh, the Monterey Park area right now, and um, you know you watch him go down these streets and you see all these parked cars on the sides there, and you just never know when a pedestrian or someone might step out. You know, it, it's a, a very you know, it, it's, yeah, special, a, it's a very dangerous a, situation. It's very dangerous, especially when you see these roads start to narrow. He's clearly in a residential neighborhood, and your heart skips a beat every time he comes up on this traffic. Anytime there's a red light, he's looking for a way to weave right through. In this case, the light is turning green for him. He's catching a little bit of luck here. And to give you an idea, he is now traveling uh, westbound, uh, I believe. We are going westbound, right? No, I'm sorry, eastbound, eastbound. Excuse me. He's now turned around. He is now going eastbound on Reagan Street. So he's now reversing course here, paralleling the freeway, and something tells me he may look for an opportunity to get back on the freeway. He's only a few blocks, uh, a few blocks north of the 60 freeway here. So he might look for a sign that directs him back towards the freeway unless he wants to dump the vehicle in this neighborhood. There he goes, making a right turn, southbound turn, back towards the freeway. And I think we're going to look for an opportunity to get back on the freeway, as I suspect. Oh, great. Yeah. But you always want to see it. I mean, that, that's what they're looking for. They'd much rather see it on the freeway, especially with an unpredictable driver. It's just a safer, uh, a safer situation for everybody, especially when you see him uh, navigating these surface streets here, now making random turns, you know, not traveling at any great, you know, at any great speeds here to try and lose those officers, just kind of weaving through and zigzagging through this neighborhood. Now we're going, uh, I think, westbound, westbound on. Uh, East Fernfield, and now another turn possibly, oh. or slowing down. Yeah, another random turn. This is turning in to a bona fide joyride, Rob, as he kind of makes up these moves as he goes along. Now coming up on Pomona Boulevard and uh, continuing to look, I think, look for an entrance ramp onto the freeway, which is what you see there near the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. We'll widen out just a little bit. I suspect he's going to look for that uh, entrance ramp any minute. Yeah, you have to wonder what's going through uh, this guy's head. Um, at, at least he seems, like you mentioned before, somewhat calm. He's not driving too erratically. Um, but where is he, in a back alley now? Yeah, it looks like a little more of a, uh, it looks like an alley behind a commercial district along Garfield Avenue. Uh, yeah, it's clearly an alley where you never know when somebody might pop out uh, yeah. of one of these businesses. Uh, but just hope you just hope for the best here as he comes back up onto Riggin Street. You'll notice that we have been here before, now doing a full loop in this neighborhood, which tells you that, again, I think this is a very ad hoc driver behind the wheel here, just 
again, making it up as he goes along, as he gets closer to the freeway. It's going to put him, I think, on, uh, an, uh, on, uh, on Riggins, which I think puts him under the 60 freeway in a minute here. We'll see. Uh, or did he already pay? He might have already bypassed the freeway. So now he's in a different neighborhood altogether as he moves further uh, towards the north here. But again, still you see those four black and whites maintaining a clear visual here. Fortunately, not a whole lot of traffic. Lots of opportunities for him to dump the vehicle, but he's just continuing this pursuit, I think, as long as there is fuel in the tank. Again, this is not his vehicle. It is a stolen vehicle, so he will be looking for a chance to hide at, you know, when he sees fit, especially as that tank starts to run low eventually. He will look for an opportunity to either run or give up, and you just hope that it's one of those two peaceful options and nothing more daring than that. Yeah. Well, why don't we recap what we know so far? As you mentioned, uh, Chris, it is a stolen vehicle. The man inside is possibly armed, we're told. Uh, we have San Bernardino Sheriff's uh, de deputies in pursuit right now. Um, and they've been, uh, even though we are like in the Monterey Park area, they have stuck with this pursuit, which started uh, somewhere in San Bernardino. And uh, this guy hasn't given up. He's just right now driving in circles in that neighborhood. And uh, fortunately, uh, driving relatively slow uh, compared to other chases that we've seen. But, uh, you know, right now it's just San Bernardino sheriff's deputies uh, Keeping, oh, it is CHP right now. They've moved in and uh, and taken over this pursuit. But this is, uh, yeah, they're, they're staying, you know, at least 10 car lanes behind, it seems like, Chris. Yeah, and a little more aggressive there as he comes up behind the freeway there along Pomona Boulevard as he parallels the freeway, losing a visual. He comes underneath the freeway, and you saw right as you said that, Rob, he, that, that pursuing officer, that primary officer, uh, stepped on it and really came close to the rear of that vehicle. No sign of a pit maneuver, but it was enough to agitate the driver who is now speeding down South Gerhardt Avenue. I think that spooked him a little bit, and now they're applying a little more pressure, if it is true. Uh, I, do we have – I, I did not hear – the uh, transition, but if you have that, if you have that from our desk, that would make sense. If CHP has taken over this pursuit, we may see different tactics here as they pull up much closer than San Bernardino was just a few minutes ago. Is that what we're hearing? CHP has taken it over. I'm trying to get word from our assignment desk as well. Yeah, that, that's what I've been told. CHP, uh, I've been told you could tell by the uh, flashing lights that go side to side. So I learned something uh -huh. new today as well. Um, uh, me too. I, that's actually that yeah. is actually a new one on me as well. There you see him blowing through a stop sign there, weaving around traffic, even going the wrong way there for just a second. But uh, now this gets dicier. Now he feels a little more pressure. California Highway Patrol treating him a little bit differently. And now that California Highway Patrol is involved, we expect that San Bernardino will pull back completely and uh, let CHP do their thing. Again, the good news, as you mentioned, is that the driving behind the wheel, behind the wheel is fairly composed. The bad news is that this is a person who is possibly armed with a handgun, and we don't know what other crimes have been associated with this Grand Theft Auto suspect, which raises all kinds of question marks as to the desperation and the willingness to create more havoc here uh, on the part of that driver. We also have no clue, uh, at least from what we are aware of, how many people are inside that vehicle. Again, I believe that law enforcement is dealing with more facts and details than we are privy to. But right now, uh, they are just trying to get this person off the road as he gets back on to Whittier Boulevard now at uh, only about 20 miles per hour. We'll see if he speeds up again. But I expect the tactics uh, will continue to change here as that California Highway Patrol lead officer there uh, starts to take this further towards the freeway. Yeah, and you, you may be thinking, oh, why not just pit maneuver? But you have to remember a pit maneuver, you know, can send that car out of control. There's a lot of people in this area, a lot of other vehicles. So uh, it's it's kind of a tough choice, I would think, for these uh, for the lead officer to to make that yeah, call I and and try and pit oh, a car. Oh, oh, pedestrian right there next to that vehicle coming very close oh. as he made that wild right turn there. Uh, you're right. At, at least as long as we've had eyes on this, Rob, I haven't seen a really clear opportunity to execute a safe pit maneuver. Uh, they're going to be looking for the speeds to stay around 20 to 40 miles per hour, uh, but 
you know, you also need the clearance, especially on these yeah. narrow roads. You're not going to see it in a residential street where there could be unknowns behind any corner or parked car. And especially once you get onto some of the busier streets as we uh, start to uh, get further away from rush hour, still seeing lots of volume out there, especially on Whittier Boulevard just a moment ago. You saw there was just too many people, uh, pedestrians and motorists alike, that surround this area that just make it unsafe to execute uh, a good pit maneuver. So right now, they'll look for the opportunity if the supervisor gives the go-ahead, but we have not seen that. So right now, don't even look for that until we get to a more wide open area. The speeds are at about, about right, but again, you need really clear roads and uh, enough girth there on those uh, wider roads to execute a full 180 spin out and then bring this pursuit to a conclusion. So right now, continuing to blow through red lights here through this residential neighborhood, traveling along Eagle Street uh, here in East LA and uh, making random turns, at least by my estimation, all of these turns appear to be random. And with that much traffic down there, you can still see he's only holding at about 40 miles per hour. So pretty fast for a residential neighborhood, but obviously that vehicle is capable of going much faster if he really wanted to. So he's not exactly zooming through here, but certainly the driving is dangerous enough that they have to get this guy off the road. The chances become less and less likely that they are going to let this person go, especially from everything that we know about this pursuit. It just seems unlikely. Uh, now making another left turn there onto Hubbard Street as he continues to find himself in these residential neighborhoods looking for maybe another left turn, really doesn't know where he wants to take this, and I question uh, his familiarity with this general area. It just doesn't seem like he knows where he's going. Yeah, you, you mentioned before that, you know, he's just driving around making so, somewhat random turns here and there. It, it kind of makes you feel if he's thinking about bailing, right, Try, trying to find a, a good spot, like trying to... Uh I don't know, like uh, find a spot where he might be able to run through some some yards, jump a fence, something like that, which very rarely pans out for these guys anyway. But um, yeah, I don't know. You, you, yeah, it never, works, it never works out well. Uh, but again, you, you know, when you have somebody who's possibly armed with a weapon, you know, they kind of, uh, yeah, it just, it, there's all kinds of, of, of unknowns here. And now look at that, another person coming uh, in the opposite direction here. He's traveling at a, a relatively safe uh, speed here, but still, you know, if he just takes his eyes off the road, somebody could get hurt here on these narrow residential streets. And you just get the impression that if he sees a major, if he comes up on another major intersection, he's probably gonna take the turn uh, he's not going towards the freeway. Right now, he's just kind of meandering through this residential neighborhood. Again, still on Hubbard Street. He's been traveling down Hubbard for uh, southbound on, or eastbound on Hubbard for a couple of minutes now. You see now I count four units still behind him. And again, it's, it, from what we're hearing, it does sound like California Highway Patrol, I believe, that has taken over this pursuit. Uh, but in any event, uh, he has... Uh, kind of continued this game of cat and mouse, refusing to pull over, making random turns, not breaking any speed records. The driving is fairly tame, but as we, as we, as we've seen so many times in the past, uh, and even very recently, it could go from, you know, a very tame pursuit to a very wild and reckless pursuit in a matter of seconds at the drop of a dime if that person feels enough pressure. And you already saw at one point as that primary unit started to inch up behind him, it was enough for him to press on the gas and speed up a little bit. Now making a right turn onto busy Garfield Avenue. Uh, he's found his uh, major and now he took it. So now he's going uh, down Garfield Avenue at about 55 miles per hour, stepping on the gas here as he looks for, I believe, another free Way eventually. Yeah, it makes you wonder if uh, if he's lost or if he doesn't have GPS uh, or if he's just kind of winging it, hoping to find some way out to a freeway. Coming up on yeah, coming up on Whittier Boulevard, making the turn, making a turn onto Whittier, and there just happened to be another black and white right around the corner there. Now he's turned on his sirens. He may go ahead and join this pursuit. Not sure what jurisdiction he is, but if it is if it is CHP, we may see him get involved here to help these officers out. Uh, again, that's just speculation. Wasn't sure what agency that is, but you see those California Highway Patrol officers now keeping up with him at 60 miles per hour down busy Whittier Boulevard. Again, no opportunity for a pit maneuver here. Too much 
much oncoming traffic, too many variables on Whittier Boulevard to execute a safe pit maneuver. It's just too early in the evening, too many people around, and uh, with an unpredictable driver here, he could steer right off of Whittier Boulevard at any moment, as he has done already uh, on so many of these surface streets. Not really maintaining uh, any clear straightaways here. I, again, I just am speculating, but I believe he's looking for either a place to dump the vehicle or an opportunity to, beg, to get back on the freeway. But that would only work for him if he gets onto the eastbound side. As we get further towards East LA here, the westbound side is clear, but the eastbound side of the uh, 10 freeway and the 60 freeway alike are both uh, seeing really, really heavy traffic right now. Yeah, we're being told that the uh, law enforcement choppers have swapped out a bit. CHP choppers still in the air. San Bernardino has uh, peeled off and now LA County Sheriff Chopper is also uh, following this pursuit, which has been going on for, geez, at least a half an hour now, maybe even longer. Um, earlier, we had reports of speeds up to 80 into to 90 miles lot, per into hour. Into a parking lot. This could be dangerous here. Into oh. a Target parking lot. Uh, a random turn into a busy parking lot. Look at that, a jam-packed Target parking lot as he comes up into the shopping center. We don't know if he's just using it to cut through here. Ooh. It looks like he might be. And now a possible confrontation here with other officers trying to triangulate with him in this parking lot. We'll see if they cut him off at the exit here, but he's speeding up at 40 miles per hour through this parking lot. Lots of cars there as he looks for oh. a uh, uh, an exit opportunity onto Gerhardt Avenue. Once again, we've been Here's here before, but look at right all there. the black and whites. Yeah, all of these black and whites from now, several different agencies that are coming at him from all different angles. That's going to be enough to agitate and put him onto the wrong side of Whittier Boulevard. Now going the wrong way, going the wrong way on Whittier, back on the correct side of the on the road there, but definitely crossing over the double yellow lines for a few few seconds as he felt some pressure. We're starting to see a little bit of a pattern here as he zooms right past that red light. We're seeing a lot more law enforcement in the area in front of him and behind him. And as he feels that pressure, you're seeing a slight escalation uh, in, in terms of his daringness to speed through red lights and stop signs and definitely pick up the pace a little bit, showing that he does not want to go to jail, but certainly uh, that is probably how this is gonna end up. But right now he is still uh, zooming down at about 50 to uh, 45 to 50 miles per hour down Whittier Boulevard. Again, we've been here before. We're seeing a lot of uh, repeat tracks here as he goes in circles through East LA, but still inching his way closer to the East LA interchange uh, little by little. Yeah, and he's been uh, he's been catching some breaks. It seems like he's getting a lot of green lights. I haven't um, the last couple of uh, intersections have been green. Lucky for him, although now oh, he's running into yeah. some traffic here, and he's just yeah. jumping on the sh turn lane. Jumping into the turn lane there, oh, making a U-turn back, going westbound again. Uh, that he is on the edge of Montebello here, now going back. Uh, back towards the west. So, like I said, he keeps, it's like three steps forward, one step back towards the east. He's, he's, he's really very, very unsure of where he wants to take this or where he wants to dump the vehicle. And with that in mind, you know that eventually uh, he's going to just have to be, he's going to be forced to either give up and put his hands up or dump the vehicle and try and run. But with so much law enforcement in the area, it's not looking good for him. Not to mention you've got helicopters overhead, just too many eyeballs on this suspect that it just looks like he's basically enjoying his last few minutes of freedom here yeah. as he continues this joyride once again going westbound on Whittier Boulevard getting further and further west uh, again like I said he'll he'll go west for a little while then he'll turn around jump into some of these neighborhoods but somehow he keeps making his way further and further west and I say that because that's going to eventually put him back into LAPD's jurisdiction right now you mentioned we are certainly in the sheriff's jurisdiction CHP behind him sheriff's overhead LAPD in front of him and other and other uh, agencies like Montebello and uh, neighboring agencies that are keeping an eye on this as this traverses through various municipalities. You can see him continuing yeah. 50 miles per hour down Whittier Boulevard, blowing right through red lights. And uh, that's where you start to see things get very dangerous. You really, really worry about going through the wrong intersection with cross traffic and things could turn 
very, very dangerous. Now you see we passed that target parking lot that he tried to hide in for a minute, used it as a cut through, and is now continuing westbound on Whittier Boulevard, Rob. Yeah, so he's just going back and forth, it seems, in the, on the same street here. Um, and, and I don't know what he thinks the outcome is going to be, that the officers are going to just pull over and let him go, but um, they're, they're on him, and they are not going to let him free, right? They're going to stick with this pursuit. And you, as you mentioned, we have a, a sky full of choppers above him. Uh, th this guy, I don't know. I don't know what his game plan is, right? But it, it doesn't seem too smart right now. He's on, I, I would say he's on borrowed time. I think I think you're absolutely right about that. There's that sheriff's helicopter doing really tight orbits around that suspect vehicle. Again, this is a stolen Nissan Murano out of San Bernardino County. This has ended up in LA County, but you see him now again retracing his steps here as he does circles in various neighborhoods, not committing to any one street or neighborhood, just kind of making this up as he goes along as he uh, just uses up whatever is left in this vehicle. The vehicle's in fine shape, but you know that there is only a finite amount of fuel in that gas tank. So if he continues the aimless driving, he's going to be forced to uh, either jump out of the vehicle or give up. That's Those are the two, the two big possibilities in front of me right now are either giving up peacefully and surrendering or trying to run for it, which probably won't work out so well with all the resources that have been dedicated to this pursuit. And by the way, just because California Highway Patrol has taken over this pursuit, does not mean that San Bernardino turned around and went home. They are still monitoring this pursuit and they will likely be right behind California Highway Patrol when this pursuit does finally come to an end to bring this person back to San Bernardino to face those original charges. I would say that is the most likely scenario. He is probably not going to not going to Men's Central downtown. He's going back to San Bernardino, which is a different story, especially considering that we have, I think, pretty good reason to believe that there is more to the story here than just Grand Theft Auto. Again, I, I'm speculating a little bit, Rob, but mm. you just get that impression that he is running uh, from, uh, you know, some more serious charges. Now you see we're going back in the eastbound direction, really going back and forth right along Whittier Boulevard. He's been on Whittier now for several minutes, going east and west, east and west, making random U-turns. You saw we just passed that Target shopping center yet again as he makes his way back into Montebello proper. Yeah, and you know, at gas, gas is six dollars a gallon. Yeah. You kind of hope that the uh, yeah, a little swerve there and in, into the other uh, oncoming traffic. But at you know, expensive gas, you hope the owner he stole this car from maybe kept the gas tank at a quarter tank or uh, at least not full. Hopefully, this well. Yeah, one thing that's interesting is now that he's been up and down Whittier Boulevard with all of those resources on Whittier, we're starting to see, uh, like we did just there, a, a, spit, uh, a, spikes, a, a spike strip attempt. Oh. Uh, that's what he was swerving away from. And if that continues, you might see additional attempts to spike the vehicle as he starts, you know, if he, if, if and when he establishes a pattern like he did there for a minute. Now he's in uh, some new territory here back on Hubbard, which we were on earlier a little bit further to the east. But if he makes a right turn back on to Whittier Boulevard, we now know that there are black and whites prepared to lay down a spike strip if they see the opportunity to safely do so. So with all of the busy traffic on these majors and these narrow side streets, <coughs> a pit maneuver is less likely. But as he starts to do circles and make use, you know U-turns on the same surface streets, the possibility and likelihood of a spike strip really becomes uh, a tool that is very appetizing for California Highway Patrol or any of these agencies that are monitoring this pursuit. Yeah, so Chris, uh, we have some uh, video just a few minutes ago. Here's This is from, uh, I don't know, maybe five minutes ago when he made that turn and came so close to those pedestrians uh, by the car there. Fortunately, they, that they were not hit, but the car continued on. And this is what we're talking about. This is, you know, how these situations can get so dangerous so quickly. You know, he makes a turn, it's dark, and there are people in the street. 
Exa exactly. You know, these you know wild left and right turns at various intersections, barely breaking in some cases, and then a swerve into the wrong lanes of traffic, crossing over the paint there. It puts everybody in danger. You just take your eye off the road for just a second as you're trying to run from law enforcement. Your adrenaline's going, and, uh, it, you know, it doesn't take much, unfortunately. It just doesn't take much for somebody to get hurt. That's why these pursuits are so dangerous, and that's why we cover them the way that we do because you know when when you have somebody who is so unpredictable who is disobeying the rules of the road erratic moves left and right it poses a real threat to the public here uh, in all of these neighborhoods and that's why it's so important to keep an eye if you, if you live in the area stay home keep your doors and windows locked because you just never know how this is going to end as we navigate these various surface streets Right, as we've seen so often in these pursuits, uh, people will bail out of those vehicles. Next thing you know, they're in someone's yard, possibly running through someone's home. I've seen in the past uh, where they've climbed onto people's roofs and have, uh, you know, ended up there. So you just, like you mentioned, you j just never know what these people are going to do, uh, where they're going to go, and, uh, you know, what's going through their mind. That's right. I mean, you know, just in the last couple of weeks, we've seen several pursuits that ended in random restaurants at different uh, times of the day, you know, dinner time, lunch time. You just run into a restaurant, hide out in a various, you know, in, in any given commercial business. If they're open, you just try and look for a hiding spot. And then all of a sudden you've got, you know, patrons that are in danger. Or in the case that you mentioned, so many times they run through neighborhoods, start jumping fences, and all of a sudden it becomes a home invasion as the person tries to hide out inside of a residence. You just never know. And that's why these situations are so volatile. And now you see him on Wilcox Avenue, which is a, a wide street that is a little bit less traveled, a few cars in the way here, but we'll see here as this uh, continues up Wilcox, if he stays on Wilcox, maybe you see with enough lanes to play with, now going under the freeway, under the 60 freeway, if he either looks for an opportunity to get back onto the 60, or if they see an opportunity to maybe give the go ahead for that pit maneuver. Right now, haven't seen any really clear opportunities, but those might be in front of us here as we get a little bit further away from the 60 on Wilcox or now on uh, just passing Gleason Street, you see uh, much less traffic. This is a narrow road here, so you wouldn't see it on a residential street like this, but if he does find a wide enough street, they may execute that pit maneuver. You never know. Yeah. And, and he just passed up a freeway, right? I mean, it w wasn't an on-ramp right there, but, uh, well, who knows? Now he's taking a, a right-hand turn. <laughs> Maybe he's going to head back and try and find the, a way onto that freeway. Yeah, I mean, that, that was my prediction, and I think it's probably still a good bet, although, uh, you know, if he doesn't know how to find that entrance, if he really doesn't know where he's going, you know, very easy to get lost in these random uh, neighborhoods here in the San Gabriel Valley or even end up in a cul-de-sac or a dead end without even realizing it. You find yourself in a position where you've now trapped yourself by you know, making these random turns. Now back on Reagan Street again, and this starts to raise the question of you know, we said earlier it appeared to be random when he got off the freeway in this part of town near Montebello, here in the East L.A. area. Maybe he does know something about this neighborhood as he continues to find himself, or we continue to find ourselves here, uh, cruising over the same exact streets uh, repeatedly now. I see a little bit more of a pattern that we didn't see earlier. Makes you wonder why he got off the 60 freeway in this part of town and why he keeps finding himself on the same street. If these street names here near the top of your screen, yeah, coming to a stop, coming to a stop, and we'll see if that driver's side door pops open. We'll see why he stopped the vehicle, if he's gonna run for it or start to surrender. Maybe the fuel tank is running low, but it's a good sign, to say the least, that he's now stopped. Now we'll just see if he starts to cooperate and obey the commands of California Highway Patrol, who are now stepping out of their vehicles, stepping out of their patrol cars with their guns drawn. They've got those spotlights on that driver's side of the vehicle. They're going to begin ordering him out of the vehicle. But right now, you see that driver's side door still, still shut. The headlights are still on, so the vehicle 
is on, the ignition is engaged. He has just come to a pause here. We'll see if he cooperates or continues the pursuit. Well, let's, uh, let's hope they can maybe get a spike strip uh, ahead of him if he does to decide to uh, take off again. But yeah, you could see the uh, officers with a couple of long guns there uh, and uh, some handguns. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, nine here. times out of 10, you're 100% right, Rob. They'll have plenty of time now in a situation like this, as he's been stopped for close to a minute, they'll have plenty of time to get on the other side of the street and set up for that spike strip. So he's somewhat boxed in. You get the feeling that this pursuit is coming to an end and you don't see him trying to run and that's a good sign. So maybe just enjoying his final minutes of freedom as I suspected earlier and hopefully, we can only hope that he gives up peacefully here. But without seeing those hands out the window, yeah. that's not a great sign. This now turns into a standoff and without knowing how many other people are inside the vehicle uh, or what the mental state of the suspect is behind the wheel, there's still so many possibilities. Again, keep in mind, there is a belief on the part of law enforcement that this suspect may be armed uh, with a handgun. So we're, you know, with that in mind, we're gonna keep an eye on this very, very cautiously. If yeah, there's some the movement vehicle, you can see, see in the, uh, through the windshield there. It uh, looks yeah. like the, the other windows on the SUV seem to be tinted, but you can obviously see through. There's some movement. I, I don't yeah, know if I noticed that too. Uh, you see some movement through the, through the front windshield. We'll stay on, on this side here and keep this uh, angle, but uh, difficult to see what's going on in there. Definitely some movement. Maybe a cell phone on. It could be a reflection, mm -hmm. but I think I might see a screen there. Uh, but still... No cooperation here on the part of the driver of this stolen vehicle. So a tenuous situation, a delicate operation here for California Highway Patrol at the end of a pursuit where the driver is refusing to cooperate. We can only imagine what is going through the, mental, through the head of that suspect and what is going on inside the vehicle. Uh, certainly the end of the pursuit is almost always the most dangerous. Obviously, there's lots of potential for danger over the course of a pursuit, especially high-speed pursuits where we saw so many erratic moves. This was not particularly high speed, but still, there are always lives in danger in every pursuit. But at the end of the pursuit, where there are so many unknowns and so many variables, especially when there's a weapon involved, it's still a very, very volatile situation. They don't know exactly what they're deal dealing with. We certainly don't know what they're dealing with. They may have a better idea of what the suspect is capable of, but we certainly don't. And for that reason, uh, you're gonna see them treat this with kid glove care uh, as they wait for the suspect to cooperate and eventually uh, probably call for more backup, which yeah. will likely come from the LA County Sheriff's Department. And this is going on right now in East Fernfield Drive uh, and Fulton Avenue. That's in the southwest San Gabriel Valley where they, they have this driver stopped right now. They're obviously ordering him to get out of the vehicle. Um, and I keep saying him, I assume it's a male. I think that's what uh, we were told, um, possibly armed, um, which really uh, jacks up the, the, the crisis situation here because you just don't know what he's going to do. And... Um, what you want to see is the, the window down, the hands out, um, and they, they ask him. Usually they'll have him get out, lay face down on the ground uh, with the hands behind him. But uh, right now we're not seeing that. Uh, yeah. The good news. Also to shut off the vehicle. They, you know, one of the first things is to shut off the vehicle. Yeah. In, some, in many cases, you want to see them even drop the keys. But the, the vehicle is clearly still on. And now we see more backup arriving. If this continues much longer, the call will eventually be put out for the Special Enforcement Bureau. Uh, they might bring in a Bearcat or they may bring in a canine unit to be ready uh, to pounce here. Uh, they may decide to use less lethal weaponry to try and gas out the suspect. All kinds of tools at their disposal here, but that will all most likely come from the LA County Sheriff's Department once that call for backup is placed. So a lot of California Highway Patrol at the end of this pursuit, but the longer this goes and turns into a standoff, it becomes uh, a more, uh, a, a more uh, a prolonged exercise. Yeah. And um, 
these guys aren't going anywhere. You know, it, it, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's on the phone with someone right now. Maybe he's calling an attorney, uh, which would probably be a, a good a good piece of advice for him. But um, yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, what you don't see is a whole lot of backup coming in yet, whether that call has been placed or not. We can assume that it might have been, but certainly at this point, it almost yeah. looks like the same four or five units that are right behind them. Let's go ahead and take this opportunity to pan over to the opposite side. Oh, I was just going to say, let's go ahead again. and see if they have set up a spike strip. Brian, let's go ahead and see if there's awaiting officers, which it does appear that there are. And here comes a black and white going the opposite way. This is going to be a head-to-head -head situation here as they uh, approach the other side of this block. Whoa, whoa. It certainly appears plenty of... Plenty of gas in the tank here. It, it, you know, it, the, the pursuit is back on. Just like that, yeah. you think you're at the end of the chase, and now the pursuit is back on. Now yeah. you see the freeway, he sees the freeway, and now you really have to believe he's looking for a chance to get back on the freeway so he could try and step on that gas pedal. But he is not giving up easily. He had some time to think about it, and uh, unfortunately, uh, his better conscious is not winning out here. He is uh, still on the run here after what you hoped would have been the end of that pursuit, especially where they could have boxed him in or set up for a spike strip. Yeah. Exactly what we were talking about, Rob, they failed to do. They were not ready at the other end of that intersection. They yeah. may have their reasons for doing it, but in any event, he was able to slip right by that oncoming black and white and uh, the pursuit is back on, and it, it really makes you wonder, uh, you know, what happened there. Because yeah, a bit of a when you have a suspect isolate, it's a missed opportunity. Exactly right. There are so many more lives that are in danger now than there were just 90 seconds ago when he was sitting still uh, on that residential block. And now look at this wild left turns at high speeds through the red light there, turning off of Garfield onto Elmgate here on a uh, not a well lit street here, very residential, narrow roads uh, where the suspect is picking up speed those same units are now continuing the pursuit behind them and uh, we'll see uh, what happens next but that really amps things up here and uh, I think only makes this even more serious at this point yeah, and, and who knows uh, the conditions there, why they uh, didn't put a spike strip in front of that vehicle. Maybe if the, the suspect is believed to be armed, you don't want to put an officer in jeopardy by putting him in front of the vehicle. Um, but even, you know, half a block away, it seems like they uh, could have put a car or um, a spike strip or something there. But again, I'm not a police officer. I don't know how it works. Uh, there, there must be some sort of uh, protocol or, or uh, reason why they didn't do this. Well, one of the problems here, and, and this is a great, look at this, a busy Ooh. intersection Ooh. there, cross traffic, making, did he make the right turn? Okay, yeah. he paused there, some heavy cross traffic, and now he's back on Garfield Avenue. We'll keep a close eye on this because I just get the feeling the driving is gonna become a little bit more dangerous as he goes through another red light here, uh, slowing down for the red light, but continuing on Garfield Avenue. And what I was about to say was, uh, was Rob, that you know California Highway Patrol is the lead agency here. When it comes to coordinating for, let's say, a prospective spike strip attempt or something like that to box them in at the other end of the intersection, requires more coordination with the other municipalities. In this case, uh, LA County Sheriff's Department would be the one to help out uh, with that spike strip. But when they don't know what the uh, situation is, sometimes that uh, cooperation can get, uh, sometimes, let's just say, communication could break down, sure. or not, not necessarily break down, but communication and coordination coordination can slow down so that different supervisors are now in the kitchen together making cooperative decisions and trying to figure out what resources they're going to dedicate and what risks they are going to take to bring this to an end. Because as far as the L.A. County Sheriff Department is concerned, they are, they don't know who this guy is. They don't know what the charge is. They only know what they're being told by California Highway Patrol. And they have a decision to make in terms of how much they want to be involved. As far as they know, this is a San Bernardino suspect. And, you know, there's just a lot of decision points and people making decisions that may have contributed to that lack of readiness there at the end of that block. In the meantime, though, we see that speed's picking up here, 50 miles per hour, again, down Wilcox, uh, Boulevard, Wilcox Avenue. 
again doing a circle yeah. in the same neighborhood where there are now officers not only behind him but officers in front of him as well and some of them may very well be LA County Sheriff's deputies but he is still continuing these circles in the same general part of town which makes you wonder maybe he lives here or you know just yeah, you knows know, someone familiar or, with this neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, you just never know. And and we keep seeing him circle underneath the 60 freeway there. So you would think maybe he isn't interested in getting on the freeway because uh, you be able to figure out some way to uh, find right. an on ramp. That's right. And now once again, back on empty Garfield Avenue, a little bit of traffic going the opposite way here. But if they see a straightaway without any oncoming traffic. He's going, you know, just a little too fast for that pit maneuver, but if he slows down, they could give the go-ahead here, or considering that he's done so many circles, he's been on Whittier Boulevard, he's been on Reagan Street, he's been on Garfield Avenue, they're gonna start setting up oh. at these various intersections for a possible spike strip, as we saw a little while ago, coming very close oh. to traffic here. Might Other motorists some pedestrian help, in. yeah. Try, yeah, yep, some, uh, using that some... gas station likely to cut through here. Or is he going under there? Is he going? Let's hope he's going around the pumps. Up. Going around the pumps, and now coming back we here. We'll see. There's an opportunity wow. for a pit. There was an open opportunity to uh, nudge that vehicle. Uh, you know, it might have been a little bit too congested for them. Yeah. But uh, in any event, you see lots of law enforcement ready for him. Again, under under the 60 freeway, uh, bypassing opportunities to get on the freeway as he is now back into a commercial area along Garfield Avenue, really amping things up here. And that just really makes me worry about the uh, unknowns here. Now into the back of, uh, oh. or actually into a parking lot, Back a 99 a parking cent store lot. parking lot. Uh, a little more pavement here, not as busy of a parking lot, but just likely, most likely, looking for a way to cut through and get back on to, in this uh, case, uh, closed in pretty quick there, looks like uh, Via Campo, which is just off of Garfield, uh, coming around this Ford dealership here. Now again, pa paralleling the freeway. If there's gonna be an opportunity to get back on the freeway, this is gonna be it. So we'll look for an opportunity. There he is, look at that, going around yep, traffic long. here, but no, no entrance ramp, no entrance ramp just going back under the freeway. You'll notice, Rob, we've now been under this overpass on several occasions. Yeah. This one, as well as other neighboring underpasses, uh, he is now across Pomona and continuing to kind of meander on the north and south side of the 60 freeway. Something tells me this is going to end in a foot bail, but that's just a guess on my part. Yeah, and he does seem to be... Um I don't know, you know, like he's more herky-jerky in his driving right now, and the way he was cutting through uh, the, the gas station and the parking lot for the 99 cent store, uh, uh, it makes you wonder if he is getting uh, a bit more antsy or uh, uh, hyped up, maybe preparing to, to, to bolt from that vehicle. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right, and even though the driving has been relatively tame, we see situations where he makes, a, you know, a, a, an unpredictable move or a dangerous uh, move where other traffic can't see him, whether he's blowing through a red light or a stop sign or what have you, and it could go from a tame pursuit to, as I mentioned before, a very dangerous pursuit where somebody could get hurt, whether it's cross traffic or a pedestrian, somebody walking their dog at this time, of the night. These are very residential neighborhoods that we are traversing here. Now 60 miles per hour doing almost uh, 20 miles plus over the speed limit down Garfield Avenue where there is little traffic as he picks up steam here. 60 plus miles per hour on Garfield is going to uh, raise the ante here and you might see if the traffic stays light, you might see them uh, pull up a little bit closer behind him, maybe apply a little more pressure. You see, again, law enforcement both in front of him and behind him with limited options in this situation. But if he slows down, that's where they can maybe bring this to an end. I got an arm hanging out now. Huh. But again, oh, on yeah. Garfield, there he is on Garfield. Uh, I don't know how many times we've seen him drive up and down Garfield Avenue here. Up and down, yeah, numerous times by my count. I've yeah. lost track, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, a lot of these street names, if they sound familiar, uh, trust your instincts, because we have been here before, and uh, and he keeps making these really random turns. But I say random. He may not 
But he's, he, he's got he, his he, arm out the window now. I don't know if he's flipping off I'm officers sorry. or uh, I don't know if you could see that, Chris. But. Yeah, he, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, Rob. Yeah, he may he may be more familiar with these roads that we're giving him credit for. Um, you know, one thing he hasn't done is trapped himself too much uh, in, in any uh, you know dark corners here. Yeah. When I say dark corners, I mean like you know dead ends or, or or what have you. But in any event, he's continuing to backtrack again, going back towards Whittier Boulevard, heading back towards the freeway. I mean, these are really uh, repetitive steps that he's making here as we continue further south away from the six freeway now uh or i'm sorry away from the 10 back towards the 60 mm -hmm. we're just kind of we're, we're bouncing so uh so frequently up and down the same streets i'm starting to lose uh direction here but yeah he is now on grand ridge avenue heading back towards the 60 freeway and uh if he slows down a little bit i almost wonder if we may see an opportunity for that super supervisor to feel more comfortable giving the go-ahead for that pit maneuver. We'll see here, but uh, it's really anybody's guess at this point. We thought we might see a, spik a spike strip yeah. at the uh, pause there in that pursuit, but that didn't happen. So uh, we'll see what they have in mind here. Yeah, and, and that really did throw me for a loss. They had several minutes there where he was stopped on a very narrow street, uh, and, and there was an opportunity, you would think, to spike strip the, the car, blockade it, um, but... Yeah, after it seemed like four or five minutes, then he just pulled away. I think I think the biggest reason is that they have too many unknowns inside of this vehicle, namely the weapon. Yeah. The report of a weapon inside that vehicle, I think, is playing a big part of the calculus here, especially on the part of California Highway Patrol. They are much less likely, uh, if at all, willing to pit a vehicle with a known weapon inside the vehicle. And again, I repeat, we really don't know how this all started, only that this is a grand theft auto suspect who is possibly armed. Uh, if they have confirmation of that weapon and confirmation of more serious crimes that have taken place here, again, as he comes back on to uh, Garfield Avenue yet again, that will prevent them from, uh, from executing a pit maneuver. However, we have seen a willingness to try the spike strip. Yeah. But the pit maneuver seems to be out of the question. I see, I, you know, we've seen a couple of, of possible opportunities. I yeah. just think that the, the weapon in that vehicle is the big game changer here. Yeah, on the, uh, the right-hand side of the screen, we're looping uh, one of those opportunities where you see the, the spike strip thrown out into the street. He was able to, uh, to dodge it, though. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, back into I, this yeah. might even be the same gas station. Same shell station, just I believe. a few moments ago. Yeah, I think it's the same station, and he's cutting through again. Now, whether it's a coincidence that he's choosing the gas station or whether Ooh. he's actually running out of gas back underneath the 60 freeway here again, Garfield Avenue at the 60, traversing the same overpasses, <laughs> or I should say underpasses, as he reverses course here. Back into that commercial district here, uh, he is uh, picking up a little bit of speed and refusing to pull over as he continues at 50 miles per hour in this stolen Nissan Murano. Again, to recap now, we are going on upwards of at least 90 minutes uh, that this pursuit has been taking place, and that's a minimum. I, we don't know exactly what time it started. It could be much longer, especially considering that this all started in San Bernardino County. Uh, so, you know, this is a lengthy pursuit, uh, and law enforcement has yet at any point shown a willingness to just give it up. And, and the longer it goes and the more dangerous it becomes, I think the less likely it is, as you mentioned, that they will give it up. So this is going to end somehow, some way, with him most likely uh, being taken into custody. But it's a matter of whether he gives up peacefully or by some other means they have to forcefully uh, end this pursuit. We'll see how it ends, but you just hate to see it on these surface streets. Believe me, each and every one of these law enforcement officers is wishing at this point that he would just get back onto the freeway because that is that is just the safest place uh, for for a pursuit like this. Uh, you know, you just there's just less opportunity for collateral damage. There's less opportunity for pedestrians to get involved, uh, and you know, there's more opportunity for him to. Uh, uh, basically stay in a, a contained area where they can create traffic breaks either, either 
either behind him or in front of him or both. Uh, yeah, but at this point, as long as he's on surface streets, all bets are off. I think the, the, the knowledge of a weapon inside that vehicle, I believe, is playing a really big part here. And then there's other possibilities. Whoa, Look at whoa, that, a spike got strip. A spike strip. A spike strip tearing up that front left wheel and that's going to really that's going to really bring this to a halt look at that tire uh that tire uh, rolling shredded. away from him and it just shredded on impact and now it's a different situation now that front left wheel is inoperable the car likely still mobile but it has come to a stop at Garfield Avenue and Via San Clemente here uh, in East LA as now multiple black and whites uh, pull up behind the termination of this pursuit, I believe probably the end of this pursuit. We will see whether he tries to gas it and get away or whether he Rear is now realized too. that the, uh, yeah, both tires, you're right. That front left wheel is down to the rim and that, man, that happened really quick. Yeah. That but happened really quick. He, he's and been going uh, up and down Garfield Avenue so many times, they had to know he was going to do it one yeah. more time, and they were waiting with that spike strip. Right. Uh, if ever there was a time where a suspect was really establishing a clear pattern and opportunity to set for a spike strip, this was certainly one of them. Yeah. And so a well-executed spike strip attempt, uh, having exactly the desired effect, maybe even quicker than realized, uh, I mean, the per <laughs> vehicle came almost to an immediate stop as that tire shredded apart. Now both left tires at least. At the very least, both left tires uh, are uh, are gone essentially, and now we'll be able to uh, you know watch and wait here to see if he changes his behavior, if he decides to roll down the window. We've already seen him roll down the window once. Yeah. You saw his left arm out the window, but maybe we'll see if he starts to cooperate or shows any signs. Well, Chris, he, you know, aside aside from all the armed officers there, it's also a canine unit. You could see the dog uh, toward the uh, upper part of your screen. It, well, now he's kind of behind the sign there, but you'll yep. see that canine dog, and that's uh, one officer you do not want to mess with. That is exactly, exactly right, and uh, it's always convenient when you've got a canine at the right place, the right time. Uh, in fact, if he wasn't, he would have been called in anyways, and now you see... It looks uh, like he's smoking he is, in there. Did you see a puff of smoke in the... Uh... I, I missed it. I got to be honest, yeah. I missed it, but uh, that would explain a lot. That really jives with a lot of other pursuits that we cover. You see the joyride mm -hmm. uh, where the driver is just aimlessly trying to drag the pursuit on as long as he can, only to come to a stop and enjoy his final minutes of freedom, either taking a smoke or a drink or whatever, and eventually, hopefully, uh, giving up. Hopefully that yeah. relaxes him. Well, smoke them if you got them, and now yeah, exactly. <laughs> time to turn it over. There's there's a replay of that spike strip hitting on the right side of our screen here. And, and as you mentioned, Chris, it shut that car down fast because it, it got the front driver's side tire and the rear driver's side tire as well. Yeah, and I can't speak for the right tires. It's a little bit, the, the shadow is uh, uh, a little bit too dark on the right side of the vehicle. I can't tell if those right tires have been impacted. But in any event, uh, the vehicle has come to a halt. And look at this, some yeah. odd behavior here. A lot of very animated suspect now that is uh, moving around. It looks like he's hitting either the dashboard or... It might be dance moves. He may have music on in there. He could be dancing. He, yeah. he, uh, it's his last dance, tell. maybe. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and double up on the driver's side of that car if we can. Not sure if we're already doubled in. We're already doubled in, so we'll see if we can, yeah. Yeah, it's harder to see because it actually takes away some of the light. So we have less light, we could punch in a little bit closer, but it's difficult to see whether he is, hmm. whether he's dancing and enjoying this or whether he's experiencing some type of a, a mental episode. Yeah. Uh, we, we, it's, it could go either way. We, we've seen it all here in Southern California, I mean, you know, you name it, uh, you know, it, it really is anybody's guess, but definitely a lot of movement, and uh, hmm. I dare say perhaps under the influence. Yeah.
Of something, yeah. Of something. Maybe just bad music, but I don't know. I did see a, a <laughs> puff of smoke about a minute or two ago, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, at times like this, you wish we had a, uh, you wish we had a boom mic on Air Seven and could hear what's going on <laughs> down there because it would probably be uh, just as entertaining. Uh, but as entertaining and as fun as it appears as he's having inside uh, that vehicle, these are very tenuous moments Absolutely. for those officers who are right behind that stolen vehicle. So uh, you just hope that he doesn't do anything too silly. And uh, they will have a certain amount of patience here uh, for this suspect. They will be able to clear the area. Hopefully they'll have more spike strips set up this time in the event that he does try and use the remaining uh, wheels that he has left to try and uh, continue the pursuit, although I don't think he'd get very far. Uh, it's certainly possible, as we saw, he was already starting to spark uh, as he after he hit that uh, spike strip, that front left mm -hmm. tire tore apart so quickly that he was on nothing but rim. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, the good news is, Chris, like, we, we haven't seen any sign of anyone else in that vehicle. It doesn't mean no one else is in there because the windows are tinted. But uh, from our perspective up here, the, the only person we, we really make out in the vehicle is that driver. It's a great point. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good point. I think it's probably a safe bet just from our observation. Certainly, you know, anything's possible. But if I had to bet, I would say that you're right. I think mm -hmm. this is a lone suspect inside the vehicle. Uh, probably, uh, I, I mean, I think it's just a safe bet. Let's put it that way. Uh, he is, again, enjoying his final minutes of freedom. And usually, usually when we see this, the next step, however long it may take, is usually a surrender. It's usually a surrender. Yeah. Uh, it's somebody that, at the very least, they could talk to, maybe talk some sense into as they make some announcements on the PA system on those patrol cars. You know, will they resort to calling uh, a Bearcat in? Possibly. Will they put that canine to use if he keeps that window open? Possibly. Um, Will they call in for additional backup? It, it's, 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 again, they've got tools mm -hmm. at their disposal. Uh, right now, it still appears to be mostly California Highway Patrol. In fact, let's go ahead while we have the opportunity here, Brian, and zoom in on some of these other uh, patrol cars that have. Uh, uh, yeah, CHP. Yeah, all of these appear to be CHP. Yeah, all. All Highway Patrol, at some point, I venture to say, you will see, if not yet, you will eventually see San Bernardino probably be in the vicinity, uh, but you see more bystanders back there, people with their cell phones catching a glimpse, trying to trying to get this on their Instagram reel as soon as possible. Always good for yeah. a few new followers, uh, but they are keeping the audience back at a distance as they try and safely bring the suspect into custody. And, you know, we, we aren't seeing vehicles in front of uh, this pursuit vehicle here. And a reason could be you don't want to put officers in any kind of crossfire um, should something happen uh, where fire breaks out. Well, yeah, we just, we, it looks like they have fired a less lethal oh, round. Two, there it is. two less lethal rounds into the uh, into the, the vehicle. Windows. Now, what is it? We don't know. We don't want to speculate too much because it could be a few different things. Don't let the smoke uh, fool you. It could be rubber bullets. It could be actual uh, pepper spray, and it could be something else. So we just don't know exactly what they're firing in there, but it appears to be less lethal rounds that mm -hmm. have now been fired into the driver's seat and we'll see if that changes his behavior here. Uh, in many cases, especially if he is under the influence, he may sustain that. Well, there well, he goes. There it is. The it was a convincer, the perhaps. The desired effect of getting him to open that driver's side door. And now look for that canine unit. If he does not put those hands in the air, you are about to see Rin Tin Tin go to town. Yeah. Let's see if he cooperates. I see hands Looks on the like head. he is now forced out of the vehicle. They've smoked him out. Uh, hands 
out of the vehicle. At least one, yeah, it looks like both hands now are visible to those officers. And hopefully, hopefully, if it's a, is it a, Rob, can you tell, is it a male or a female? Uh, it appears to be a male waving to uh, the choppers. All right, um, yeah, a male suspect who is, I, uh, well, he's I just complying. don't have, you, you probably well, are looking at a larger monitor than I am, appears to be an older male, now stepping gingerly back towards the CHP. He is, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say likely under the influence, but that's just a guess. It appears though, fortunately, he is cooperating with these officers, this pursuit now coming to an end as they prepare to take him into custody. They will approach him and place those hands there we go. in handcuffs. And now the rest of the story will be told. Well, you can see they have to now clear the vehicle. They will look inside, make sure there's nobody else inside, whether it's suspects or any innocent participants. Now you can see they'll throw up their hands in just a moment for the code four. And this pursuit certainly appears, appears to, be, over, to yeah. be all over. Yeah, good news. When you see that suspect in cuffs, uh, yeah, that looks, let's see. Yeah, this one is, uh, this one is a wrap and yeah. good news because it really, again, emphasizes, you know, what we were saying earlier. I just get the feeling that this driver may not have been as competent as we were imagining. You know, we saw him driving a little recklessly, a lot of erratic moves, occasionally, you know, going a little too fast, but I really wonder about his sobriety at this point, and that certainly uh, really could have gotten somebody hurt had this pursuit continued much longer. But they saw their opportunity. He was establishing a very clear pattern, providing the perfect opportunity for a well-executed spike strip, and that's exactly what they did immediately, that vehicle coming to a stop and uh, this pursuit coming to an end. Well, yeah, it was a good uh, hour and a half at least, as you mentioned before, and it shows that patience does pay off. These officers, uh, you know, they, they kept their patience, they stayed on his tail safely, they didn't do anything, uh, you know, reckless. Uh, the, there was a point where it looked like he may have been pulled over and could have been pinned in, but uh, it, it all played out nicely right now. Yep, I think uh, all's well that ends well here. We didn't see anybody get hurt. We didn't even see any traffic collisions. A couple of close calls maybe, but for the most part, uh, that's about it. And yeah. again, my, my guess is that he will likely be heading back to the Inland Empire to face uh, whatever charges have stacked up against him. Yeah, quite a few charges. Chris, thanks so much. We're gonna put a period on the end of this sentence. This is gonna wrap up our uh, pursuit coverage, ending uh, North Garfield Avenue and Via San Clemente in the Southwest San Gabriel Valley. Uh, we're gonna go right now to our regular streaming programming.